Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and I've been on a bit of a Terraria binge at the moment, so to finish off this month of monsters, I figured I'd make the slimiest boss of them all, King Slime. Of course, King Slime is a big slimy translucent ball of blue, so naturally I'm going to start with a big bucket of brown. This bucket of brown is monster clay, which is a wax-based clay that's pretty darn hard at room temperature, but being wax-based, with the introduction of a little bit of heat, you can get a nice soupy chocolate sauce. Now that I've got a skin scalding vat of brown goo, I can scoop it out and form it into a soft ball of brown. This not quite so edible oversized chocolate truffle can then be gingerly shaped into a nearly smooth slimy half sphere. As it starts to cool down, it'll get harder to shape until it's nearly rock solid, at which point I can start to refine the shape and smooth out all the small cracks and seams that would have otherwise been too hard to fix while it was still goopy and droopy. Finally, I've got a mostly smooth surface with a few minor imperfections that can be fixed like most things with the application of an open flame. The fire will help to heat the surface up enough to smooth it with my finger or some silicone tools, as well as add a layer of excitement and danger to an otherwise entirely too safe project. Eventually I've got a nice round Slime King-esque dome, so one final pass with the fire will soften the last of the surface and I'm ready to make a mold. I'll transfer my opaque chocolate king to a slightly larger perspex surface then surround him with the top half of a broken mixing bucket. You can of course use a non-broken bucket but you might find that without the hole in the top the silicone just runs down the sides and your mold doesn't really work. Otherwise I've got a watertight seal so it's time to mix some silicone. This is a two-part addition cure silicone which gets mixed in equal parts A and B. I don't really know what any of that means, but I do know that when this stuff cures, it cures hella fast. Really this means that you've got a limited amount of time to pour your mold before it starts to set, but it also means that it's ready to demold in less than an hour, which for someone with my patience is about 58 minutes too long. So after giving it a nearly appropriate 40 minutes to set, I can cut and peel the frame back and free my brown king slime from his icy skim milk prison, leaving me with a perfect impression ready to be filled with a bunch of blue resin. However, before I do that, I want to make a teeny tiny decomposing ninja to fit in the middle, and to make sure I don't make that little ninja too large, I'll chop my brown temporary king in half so I can figure out proportions and reference the size as I go. Now, if you're not aware of the lore of King Slime, you may be wondering what relevance a little decomposing ninja has. Well, apparently the ninja is a former hero who attempted to feed the king and failed, thus resulting in a rather unfortunate ending. The decomposing bit is more of an artistic interpretation on my end. Now, in order to make a properly decomposing body that's only the size of my fingertip, I figured I'd work my way back through the levels of decomposition until I'm at the first stage. That means the first thing I need to do is make a little bony body, or a skeleton for you book learning folk. To that end, I've made a little skull and attached a spine, then added a rib cage and some hips, onto which I can glue a pair of bony legs before moving back to the back and adding some shoulder blades, which, in turn, get a pair of little arms added onto. I wanted the body to be curled around itself in a semi-fetal position, so I've brought the knees to the waist and crossed the arms over. I can then make some little feet to attach to the bottoms of the legs, and some little hands get attached to the tips of the arms. With my skeleton looking extra spooky, I can start to build up the fleshy bits by adding lumps of light flesh-toned clay onto the bones, leaving sections uncovered to add to that decomposing look. I'll then slop a couple eyeballs in place and add a screaming mouth before removing one of the eyes, cause reasons, I guess. Otherwise, with the majority of the bony boy covered in clay skin, I can add the torn and tattered ninja outfit on top, which I'll do by squishing a blob of black clay extra flat and tearing it apart so it looks like well-worn ripped cloth which I can then strategically drape across the body. Finally, for the last bit of decomposition, I'll paint the fleshy bits with a washed out brownish red, as well as give the exposed sections of skin still stuck to the bones a deeper red touch up, before finally giving the black cloth an extra black base coat, followed by some aggressive dry brushing to make it look like it's tattered and worn. Some final checks to make sure my body fits my Slime King and I can remove the rod rammed up his butt and attach a tiny, nearly invisible length of fishing wire which I'll use to suspend him upside down over and into my King Slime mold. And with that, it's finally time to mix some resin. Q 
Cooking slime is a very blue but still translucent dome of slime, so once I've mixed my resin, I'll tint it blue with probably too many drops of dye. I also want to make sure that king slime is bubble free, so to remove the bubbles from my resin, I'm going to suck them out with a vacuum. Hello. This is a vacuum chamber and it works by some sort of magic I don't understand. The general idea though is that a little pump pulls the air out of the chamber, creating a vacuum that pulls the bubbles up and out of the resin, leaving me with a lovely clear, bubble-free resin ready to be poured. Finally, once I'd filled my slime molds, I had a tiny bit of resin left over, which felt like the perfect excuse to make some smaller slimes. This is Oyumaru, which is a reusable, non-stick molding material, which I guess I used to make counterfeit one pound coins at some point. To reuse the mold, I'll fill a little container with boiling water and drop the putty in. After a few minutes, it's nice and malleable, so I can reshape it into a round form, which I'll then jab with a large ball stylus. I can then make a few more of these ball stylus molds and fill them with my leftover resin, then it all gets set to the side for 72 hours to cure while I get to work making the king's crown. To make sure my crown fits my still curing slime king, I'll reattach my halved brown king. And to make the crown, I'll start by making a frame I can sculpt on top of out of an old roll of tape that I'll cut down and reassemble until it's roughly the size I want. I can then cover it in a thin layer of yellowish gold clay, into which I can start to cut the crowny accoutrement. Mostly this involves using a scalpel and some teeny tiny cookie cutters to remove roughly equal amounts of clay until I'm left with not enough clay, at which point I can start to return the removed clay to the crown until I've got a shape I'm happy with. Once I've got the proper shape and styling for the crown, I can start to bejewel it by sticking some pre-baked gems into the surface and pressing them in place. Then it's into the oven to lock the shape in place, and once it's been baked, I can remove it from the cardboard and tape frame, sand the surface smooth where the clay's crept up, then remove the gems and set them aside. With the gems removed, I can give the entire crown a shiny gold top coat, followed by a watery brown wash to add some shading. While the crown's drying, I'll take my gems and line them up on the sticky side of some painter's tape. Then give each of them a color appropriate glazing so they're a bit more gemmy looking before gluing them back in place on the crown. Finally, for some final shiny shine, I'll give each of the gems a coat of UV resin. And with that, King Slime's crown is finished and through the power of editing roughly 72 hours has passed so we can remove the king from his mold. Because I didn't get the clay completely smooth, my silicone mold left a slightly opaque finish to the resin. You can get around this if you coat the clay in something like a varnish to ensure a perfectly smooth surface, but that means it's hard to reuse the clay. Fortunately, it's easy enough to fix by adding another layer of resin on top. I'm just using UV resin here, which is a bit of a faff to apply over a surface like this and ensure it cures clear all the way around, but at this point I've run out of time and I can't wait for another layer of proper resin to cure, so UV resin will have to do. Also, because the Slime King is a slightly wobbly dome, the little decomposing ninja inside is barely visible. I had a sneaking suspicion this would be the case, but I couldn't think of any way around it. Basically, because the dome distorts the light, it makes the image inside look wonky, and it's made worse by the fact that the Slime King dome isn't perfectly smooth either. In fact, the only section that's perfectly visible is the bottom since it's flat, and that's the only spot no one will ever see. Thankfully, I've recorded the entire process, and at this point, the video is basically done, so you may as well stick around to the end. Otherwise, the little blue slimes have also cured, so I can pop them out of their little blue prisons and get to work making a base for my slimes to slime on. I'm going to make a nice grassy pasture for my slimes to frolic in, so I've cut a sheet of XPS foam to size and I now want to cover it in mud, which I'll make by mixing together some hole filler, matte Mod Podge, brown paint, more brown paint, and a bit of sand for texture. I'll then slap this onto my foam flooring and spread it out nice and thick, then set it aside to dry before realizing I probably should have painted the sides black before adding the mud. Once the mud's dry, it's time to add the grass, which I'll be doing with my all-time favorite material, static grass. This is a static grass applicator and it's used to apply static grass.
To apply said static grass with the static grass applicator, I'll paint way too thick a layer of PVA glue over my muddy foam wherever I want the grass to stand, then violently shake the applicator over the surface. The applicator applies static electricity to the grass as it falls, forcing it to stand upright as it hits the glue, leaving me with a lovely little grassy field. I can then flip the field upside down and tap off the excess. All that's left to do then is drop my king slime in place, add the quintet of little slimes and that's us done here and onto the glamour shots. As always, a big ol' thank you to my lovely patrons and a special hey how are you to my newest patrons, Sunny Madoka, Bobby Laporte, Lottie, Spray190, Samuel W, Joni Biniaz, Purple Kitty Woman, The Oblivion Creature, Zvai, Luck of the Draw Draven, Maru Maru, Walani, Raluca Constantinianu, Lichinura Trivagarda Subspecies Spaghetti, or Candice for short, and Magnus Newton. You are the big slimy blue goo that encases this decomposing body of a channel. As always, if you like this video, then how dare you? This is a personal video I made for me and my friends to watch. How did you even get here? Otherwise, we'll um, see you next time. Cheers.